Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the AV8B and we're looking at the HUD modes and HUD symbology. We've got four master modes. We can have Nav, VSTOL, Air to Ground or Air to Air. We'll start on nav today we'll be looking at the base symbology we will not be looking at navigation or weapons specific symbology which will be covered in those relevant videos this is our time zulu or utc this is our distance from us to our currently selected waypoint and that is waypoint one there this is our vertical speed indicator currently minus 3850 feet per minute this is our altimeter either barometric or radar and we'll show you how to switch between those in a minute this is our heading tape here. We can have this aircraft either set to read magnetic or true heading. It's currently set to read true. So this chevron shows our current true heading in this case, which is about 116. This mark here shows where our currently selected waypoint is in terms of heading. Just by coincidence, it happens to nearly line up with our current true heading. This guy here, if we were in our magnetic heading rather than true, would show our true heading once we'd set up our magnetic declination. And that's obviously 100, 110, 120 and 130. This is our KIAS indicated airspeed in knots, quite fast at the moment. This is our current angle of attack. That's the difference between the longitudinal axis of the aircraft and the direction of travel of the aircraft in degrees. That is our MAC, currently 0.70 at this current altitude. This is our current G, 1.1 gravities. This is our current ground speed, that's 462 knots. This is our current bearing and distance to the mission bullseye. This is our maximum sustained G throughout the history of the flight, which was 2.6 G. This is our true heading repeated digital, 116 degrees true heading, which matches up with the chevron. Bear in mind, we are set up to read true heading. This is our pitch ladder, minus 5 degrees, minus 10 degrees, minus 15 degrees. We've got the horizon line there with the marks there showing which way is up and down. We would have our positive climb, 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 15 degrees up above, and they would not be dotted. The general symbology in modern aircraft is that dotted is down, minus, and solid bar is positive. This guy here, the circle with the wing, the wing, and the tail is our velocity vector or flight path marker that shows where we are actually traveling. It has a ghost image, which I'll try and show now. That guy there, which is essentially our side slip indicator. So what I did is I waxed some radar on, and you can see our your slip. While we're on there, we're going to show that we have some options. Down below the UFC, we've got some options here. This is what we're going to show on the HUD. Do we want to show normal, a normal HUD layout? Reject one, which rejects some of the symbols. Reject two, which rejects even more of the symbols. So that is the normal. That is the half decluttered, that is the full decluttered. And as this is a RASBAN module, you will not be surprised to hear that they've actually labelled this upside down. So if I put that in norm, it will actually be reject two. If I put it in reject two, it will actually be norm. And I believe reject one is reject one. The time you watch this video, it may have been corrected. Just bear in mind that. And just to show you an example of what happens if I click it. So that's normal. That is reject one. It removes some things and adds some analog scales and rejects two, which is labelled as norm, rejects even more of the uh, symbology. So let's put it back to normal. We've got an analog brightness switch here, which should always be up to the top, at least in daytime. We've got a day, an automatic detection or a night mode just for brightness. And that uh, also correlates with our FLIR, which we've got it covered in another video. Our altitude, do we want it in barometric or Radar, barometric is standard, and radar, we can go to radar, and we've got an R there if we want. Next, we're going to look at VSTOL mode. This is what we're going to be doing usually when takeoff and landing. A true heading, 115. Flares are currently set to 5, 5 degrees, and I can change that if I want. Our current nozzle position in degrees, currently zero, so they're facing backwards, and I can change that if I want, down to 90 plus, 99%. Degrees, sorry, 99 degrees. Our Zulu or UTC time again. We've got our distance and selected waypoints. We've got our VSI again. And we've also got an analog representation of the VSI here, which is actually really helpful, this bar here. So as this changes, this bar will also change. Altitude, barometric again. All this stuff is the same. KIAS is the same. Angle of attack, degrees. We've got a ground speed. We've got our velocity vector here. It's actually called a different thing in this mode. It's now called a vertical flight path symbol, but for all intents and purposes, it does the same thing as the velocity vector slash the path marker. It tells you where you're going. 
Here is the witch's hat. This is the longitudinal axis of the aircraft, the datum line you might call it, where the actual aircraft is facing, not moving, depressed by eight degrees. It's something specific for the Harrier. So if I, for instance, flew so that the witch's hat or depressed attitude symbol, as it's correctly known, is on the horizon line there, that would mean the nose of my aircraft would actually be pointing plus eight degrees into the sky. In fact, I might as well just show that now. Near as damn it, depressed attitude symbol on the horizon line there. And you can see that our pitch is plus eight degrees down the bottom there. Next, we've got our angle of attack. The angle of attack is now shown on an analog bar here. So you can see that is our angle of attack, which is uh, five degrees at the moment. Let's just check that. 4.9, near enough. Here is our engine speed in percent. Currently 71% and it changes with the throttle, obviously. Here is J, our jet pipe temp temperature in degrees Celsius. Now note that both of these can have extra overload mode. So if I went to about 107%, I think it is, then we can go into kind of temporary overspeed in my current condition with my water turned off. That's all I can show you. I'll quickly flick up here from the user manual the symbology that can come to this point. And if you want to freeze frame that and look at that more, please do so. I'm going to come off of overload. This here is our side slip angle. Again, if I were to rudder, you can see that it's uh, heading off the side there because I've put the nose right and slipping, slipping to the left, which leaves us with our pitch carrots. And I'm just going to get a better position to Car. show that. Car. These are our pitch carrots here. They are depressible manually. We can change them. They're our standard and 14 degrees above horizon. We can change them from between zero and 30 degrees above horizon. And they allow us to set an ideal angle of climb given a certain weight. So I would set that up at 14 degrees here and I would fly by putting my witch's hat between them like thus. And then I know that my aircraft will be uh, pointing at least 14 degrees up into the air for my selected 14 degrees. And I can prove that by going there. And you can see at the bottom, I've got my 14 degrees there. Next, we're going to go to air to ground mode. We're going to click on this guy here. Pion. So we've got mostly symbology removed. Everything that's there is pretty much the same as normal. We've got hatches showing that we have an invalid setup at the moment, literally because I haven't selected a weapon or set anything up. Up here, note, this is no longer IAS. This is now true speed, as true speed is more relevant way of measuring speed for ground attack. Also, if we had weapons selected, we would show them here, the type of weapons, the amount of weapons, the mode that we're using the weapons in, and so on. Next, let's go to air to air mode. What we can see is we do have a weapon selected, one times AIM 9M here. Here is the or sight representation of the missile seeker head. Otherwise, everything is the same as shown, and you can see we've gone back here to IAS, which is more relevant for air to air. So that's all I've got to show with the HUD symbology modes and auxiliaries. I hope that was useful, and see you later.